So depending on whose legs you land on and the experiences, day-to-day -day experiences that you have, will say that, ah, Ghana is the most beautiful place. The people treat me so well. Good one there. Others, ah, oh, I don't want to be here no more. I don't like Ghana. Fuck Ghana. Damn. Da -da 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 -da. It's, it's okay. But the thing is that, like I said, if Ghana, if the whole of Ghana, the population is 10, I would say 2 over 10 are privy to some of this information about African diaspora. Most of them don't know. Listen, was it the priority of Ghana government, the education system, the health system, the social interventions, and was it their priority to teach the people of Ghana, African, that, hey, there are some people called African Americans or African diaspora, and this is what they've gone through. So when they come, please learn how to treat them, learn how to take them in, learn how to do this, learn how to do this. Do we have such content? Echo, echo, echo city. Do Africans really understand African diasporas? And does our African diasporan brothers and sisters really understand Africans? That is the question that has been on my mind for a long time. And I think that such conversations should be encouraged among ourselves. Such talk or such discussions should be encouraged among Africans here in the motherland and then Africans over the diaspora. Hello, thank you very much for checking me out. My name is Elko Simpson. I'm a Ghanaian content creator. And basically what I do is to create the connection between Africans home and abroad. So it must be about the positive vibe of all of us coming together to project Africa together and to project Africa. So the question has been, does the typical African person understand the African diaspora? Let me tell you something. Until a few years ago, myself and most Africans thought that when we talk about African diaspora, it's only about African Americans. Yes, so at some point, Anytime we want to refer to African diaspora, we call them African-American, African-American. We didn't know much about black Canadians. We didn't know much about the black British, if I should use the word, if I'm wrong, kindly correct me. We were only looking at African-Americans because they were the ones who were particularly coming to Africa. I remember, like I told you in my previous video, when I was growing up attending the first school in Ghana, Philip Kwaku Boys School. So Philip Kwaku was a missionary uh, who was sent to the UK to learn the word of Christ. So when he came, he set up a school in the castle. And then the ca after that, it was moved from the castle to its current location, which the school is now being renovated by the government. Big ups to the government for doing that. So I attended, that is the first school in Ghana. So I attended the very first school in Ghana, Philip Kwaku. During that time, we were very close to the castle. So I got to know about someone called African-American. I mean, I could see black people and their language was way different. I mean, they were slanging and all that. So it got some of us so much interested in knowing who are these people? Why did they talk like that? They are black people. That gave myself and my big brother and... Uh, Michael Olays, who is now, um, he is now um, the Ghana Toll Creators Vice President. Plus, I mean, a couple of people who some of them are currently living in the USA. Yes. And this that I'm telling you is way back when I was in, when I, when I was in an, like elementary school. So to me, my contact with African American, now African diaspora to me, started way back 
So I had an idea who an African American is, which you know, um, through time I got to know these are called they are called African diaspora. So then we used to write letters, you know, write a sheet, uh, our names and address on a sheet of paper. And then when they come, they come big buses. I mean, man started seeing these things like from way back, you know. So these big, big buses and they smell good. <laughs> like, I will lie to you. I mean, when, when, you, when you get closer to an African-American, I'm talking about those times. And even now, they, they have a smell, a different smell. So... I mean, they would come, you know, they would go to the castle. I was very young. They would go to the castle. I take a sheet of paper and I cut it into pieces and I write Echo Simpson P.O. Box 801. That was my father's address. And then uh, Cape Coast. And then I maybe we'll write something like, I need books, I need stuff. Those times, we were not asking people for money. Those times, when we were castle boys, when we were running to the castle, just to see an African-American, we were not going there for money. We were going there for connection. Yes, for connecting, for networking, for educational materials. And some of you did write us back. Because when you're going, even that time, they were still chasing us at the castle. I'm telling you, we've gone through, you know, a few things like that. So, yes, yeah, so sometimes we will be chased. So we will take the paper, roll it and throw it into the into the bus and i'll be very honest with you some of my brothers elder brothers like jacob my my big brother justice like michael olise um this brother who is now in the u.s he's married to an african-american you see the thing is that some of us started early getting to know about who an african diaspora is right because we lived close to the castle and the castle was like a place for us to go. Through that interaction, I personally and others decided to learn more, to know more, to communicate and learn about the whereabouts of these people who are like us, but they speak English, they don't speak our language. Some of us took to the next step to read books, to go to the internet. I started doing internet like way back. I'm not old, but sometimes when I sit down and I see the things that I'm, people are now getting to know, I'm like, I knew this way back. And I give thanks and praise to the Almighty God and to the ancestors for showing me some of these things. All right, so I started learning about them, reading about them. I got, for, so, I, I got so fascinated to just to be with or to talk to an African-American. And at some point, even when I go to school, I try to speak like an African-American, like I try to slang and all that stuff. It was just fun for me. And at the same time, it was educational for me. So my current dealing with African-Americans or African diaspora started from way back. And now, like I said, through education, through watching videos, listening to them, reading about them, I got to learn, if it's, let's say, if I'm going to mark myself over 10, during that time, I got to know about their culture, way of life, maybe 4 over 10. Over 10. But when I started growing up, being a teacher, going through the university, and all that opened my eyes more to know about the culture of these people. So, in my dealings with them, I know what to say and what not to say. I know what to do and not what to do. I know how to feel like them sometimes. There are a couple of times I have sent people to, I mean, tourists, African-Americans, diaspora, to the castle. And after the whole incident, some of them were crying. I mean, I remember... I've forgotten her name. Um, she was super crying. And I made a certain remark. I said, I understand how you feel. The reply that she gave me was so negative, but I felt there was no need for me to react because I know and I've read and I understand what they've gone through. 
He was like, no, you don't understand what, how, how I feel. Do, do you know how I feel? And she was crying. Do you know how I feel that my ancestors has to go through this? And at the end of the day, I come to Ghana, and this is why I didn't want to come to the castle. And you saw, and I saw white people in there. What were they doing in there? Blah 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 blah. blah. I was like, I was quiet because of the education, the experience that I've had learning about African Americans. When she busted out like that, I was quiet just because I said, "Don't cry. I understand how you feel." I didn't. Like I said, if it's over 10, maybe I understood how she felt for over 10. So, there are, there are people in Ghana, in Africa, that may be privy to some of this information. They may be privy to some of these experiences, the culture of the typical African diaspora, which in those days... We were calling them African-Americans. Now, there is another group of people who are just opposite of me. They maybe never lived in, in, in Cape Coast. They never even traveled to Central Region. They never even had a chance to visit the castle. They, they've not even had a chance to watch TV and hear an African diaspora talk or a video explaining the culture of these African-Americans or African diaspora. Now, such a person may react and act differently towards them per what they have heard or what they have seen. Either whether it's very intense or very shallow, deep or shallow. So, there are two people in Ghana right now. Some of us who were lucky and privy to have learned the culture of the African diaspora, and now we know how to deal with them, deal with them, not as in confronting them or anything, but day-to-day -day activity, conversation. We know how to talk to you. I mean, I have a lot of African-American family. They call me family, and I'm very happy that they call me family. And I call them family. And day in, day out, we work together, we do things together. I might not be in Ghana, but we still work, we do things together. Some of you, yes, due to the interactions, we fall on, an, you know, some rough path. Not so smooth, but I understand because we are learning from each other. So there are others who are not privy to some of this information. And when you come to Ghana... And these two people, you happen to fall on any, depending on your experiences, then you would have to make your judgment about Africans or about Ghanaians. I have, when I came to Canada, a couple of people call me every day. Echo, are you okay? Echo, do you need something? Echo, what are you doing? Do you have to get a work? Echo, and I, I can get you the like I am very happy getting these people calling me. Others don't give up. They don't care. That is that is that is it. That is it. You see, so depending on whose legs you land on and the experiences, day-to-day -day experiences that you have will say that ah, Ghana is the most beautiful place, the people. Treat me so well. Good one there. Others, ah, oh, I don't want to be here no more. I don't like Ghana. Fuck Ghana. Damn. Da, 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 da. It's, it's okay. But the thing is that, like I said, if Ghana, if the whole of Ghana, the population is 10, I would say 2 over 10 are privy to some of this information about African diaspora. Most of them don't know. But the majority, I think the majority of Ghanaians are not really, really educated. I mean, we could have like, I mean, um, the, the older people are not really, really educated, most of them, because that time there wasn't like, your parents wouldn't really, really take you to school. If you're, if you're a lady, yours is the kitchen, having children, taking care of the, of the house, 
and everything. And if you're a man, you have to be making, you know, go go find some money, bring it to the house, let's take it. So there wasn't really that education. Even if there was, was it the priority of Ghana? Listen, was it the priority of Ghana government, the education system, the health system, the social interventions and was it their priority to teach the people of Ghana, African, that, hey, there are some people called African Americans or African diaspora, and this is what they've gone through. So when they come, please learn how to treat them, learn how to take them in, learn how to do this, learn how to do this. Do we have such content for the people of Ghana? No, there isn't. Sometimes when I speak to brothers and sisters like yourself watching me right now, and thank you for watching, kindly put it up as a comment, like this video, share this video, and let's have this conversation. Sometimes I speak to brothers and sisters and they're like, Echo, in our syllabus in the United States, we only told there's something called Africa, where the lions and tigers and um, there's, there's this song, it's, it's, it's funny. I'm not scared of lions and tigers and bears. Uh -uh, loving you. That's part of. I mean, when I was talking about tigers, it just came. I think one of the artists from US. Yeah. So, I mean, they, we live on trees. We live on that. There was one time I had a call from this brother that I met on social media. We become so close, even because of me, because he met me as a Ghanaian, and I told him more about Ghana and Edin Crest symbol. This brother went and did it, uh, this sign, Edin Crest symbol, on his arm like this. He's called Sheldon. It's been a while. I've lost contact with him. He one time asked me, Echo, how are you communicating with me? What are you using? Hello? That was like, that was like 2008, 9? No, 2009 or 10. He was in high school. I remember he's Sheldon. I was, Sheldon, Sheldon, I forgot him. He was a younger brother. By then I had started teaching. So I was telling him, okay, he said, so do, do, is it true we have tigers and stuff? Where do you live? I was like, I had to take my time to educate a brother. So in this sense, should we say that America should create a content to teach us Africans here or to teach the African Americans or African diasporas there about living in Ghana? That is not their priority. It is not their priority. It is not their priority. You get it. Same way, Ghana, as at that time, didn't have that as a priority. So some of us who were privy to, you know, finding our own way to educate ourselves about who an African American, African diaspora, or Black British or Black Canadian is, we have we we know. It is recently, 2019, that the president of Ghana officially made it clear that we are inviting African diaspora. And even that, somewhere asking, what is African diaspora? The, the layman, what is African diaspora? There were African Americans coming to Ghana, but it wasn't that popular. Now you meet a taxi driver and say, hey, Charlie, the other day I took these people, they are black people, they are African American. The way they were talking, they said they want to go to the castle, they want to go to the... I meet some taxi drivers and they share stories. They are happy to know. So, I think that we, when I say we, Africans here and Africans abroad must find a way to have this conversation and to teach ourselves, but not to start blaming Africans. Why am I coming to Africa, Ghana, and I find it difficult to have citizenship, and I find it difficult to move around, and I find it difficult when I go to the marketplace, and I find it difficult because it has never been a priority of a government to say that my people, on Mondays, 8 o'clock, tune your TV to maybe a Simpson TV, and you would find an education on 
our brothers and sisters who were taken away from us. There's nothing like that. So when you get the chance to land in the motherland, just be open-minded. Be open-minded to learn how we do things. This is how we do it. It is not... People don't intentionally eat with their hand because an African-American or African diaspora is sitting there with you. No. They don't intentionally do it. It is our court. That's how we do it. So when we get the chance, I believe that we've not had the conversation yet. I believe that we've not had enough conversation. I believe that we've not had enough conversation yet. If we've had that conversation, if we've had that conversation all over and all over again, we wouldn't be, I mean, getting stories somewhere, somebody saying Africans don't like African diaspora or African diaspora don't like Africans. You go about it, you hear stories like that. Why should it be so? Why, why must it be so? Why? So it's about time that we stay open-minded and let us come together and build a content and build a subject matter to discuss and to talk and to learn about each other. If, if we do that, we're good. We have to, like I said, we have to create a content. And that content should educate ourselves Okay, the layman on a Sunday morning or Sunday evening tune into one of the radio stations in Cape Coast, you know, a nationwide project for one year, two years, nationwide project. Okay, so this episode, we are going to talk about how our African brothers landed in these places. This episode, we are going to talk to you about what happened to them the young mentality now. Then you realize that the typical African is learning to understand your culture. So when you come, it will be like this, but not like this. Maybe at a point, maybe if the US is going to do that, the next president, whoever is going to be, is going to do that and say, hey, on Sundays, you're going to learn about Africa. And Africans don't live on trees. We drive. We have Honda cars. We have Kantanka cars. We have um, skyscrapers. We have this. We have that. So when you're coming, don't be scared. I spoke to a sister who want to come to Africa. And she's like, hey, well, I'm scared. I don't know how it's going to go like I don't know if I'm going to fall sick or something's going to happen to me. Why that mentality? But when we are coming here, we don't feel that mentality. We don't feel that we're going to fall sick. We don't feel that we're going to die. We don't feel like that. So why do you, as an African diaspora, feel that negative thoughts? It's because it's been implanted here. Hey, Echo. Nice to meet you. I watch your channel. I watch your video. But guess what? You look like my cousin in the USA. You look like my, my cousin in Jamaica. You, we, are, we, are like, we are like this. We don't have to allow negative education to kill the mind. And some of us, I agree, some of us grew up learning this negativity about Africa and Africans. So it's hard, hard for you. It's very hard for you. When I say hard, let me show you a typical example of hard. It is very hard for you to just say that, okay, this is hard. It's heavy. It's killing me. It's giving me pains. I can't even, I can't put it down. If I put it down, they will tell me I failed. No, I need to do it, but it hurts. Oh my God, drop that negative energy and pick up a positive one and just take your time. Take your time. 
and absorb it. We have a lot to share down to be doing what we are doing. It's not helping. It's, not, it's nothing. It's, it's not helping. It's not helping. It's not, it's not good. It's negative. So the question is, have we had that conversation yet? Are we having that conversation? There are a lot of positive people out there who are learning about Africa because they want to make up, they want to give it a shot. And that is one thing I've realized about Africans and Africans in diaspora. We are scared to take that risk to give it a shot. Most of the things that I, I am privy to, to, to see are things that we are using currently in this world that someone took a risk in achieving it. And after they took that risk and achieved it, now the rest we are following. So why can't you take that risk and let others follow? You have a beautiful family. Beautiful family in the United States, UK, Canada. They don't know about Africa. There are a lot of YouTubers around. I am here. Contact us. Echo, um, I'm going to pay you for your services. Do you know what I want you to do? Every Sunday, one hour, I have a big family. We're going to put you on the TV and just talk to us about Africa. Just tell us about Africa. Just inform us. Tell us what we don't know. Bit by bit, you will learn. Your family members will learn. And it will make it easy for us to come together and run things. Rather than complaining. And we have allowed Chinese people to come and take over. We have allowed white people to come here. We have allowed these people to come here. Are we done complaining? So what have you done? What have I done? What are Africans doing? Thank you very much for checking me out. If this video is relevant to you, as whoever you are, kindly put it up as a comment. Subscribe, like, and share this video. But until then, may I say, big up yourself for watching this video. And if you're coming to Ghana in December, December in Ghana, whether November, whether October, and then you need a pickup service, airport pickup, airport drop-off, or running around Cape Coast or Accra, I have a company that works on that. And we will definitely make you feel happy. Peace out. By the way, this is what I do like if I just want to. Uh, <laughs> peace.